So I suppose we have to do this, right? Talk about dinos. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Rob. My friends call me Skipper. Welcome to Skipper's Reef. Hopefully you're doing well. And uh, as promised, today we're going to talk about dino flagellates. Uh, specifically, my experience, um, my mistakes that um, led to the outbreak and to losing so many corals uh, due to dino flagellates. Um, really, that outbreak. So, I think what better way to go about this, uh, talking about this topic, than to really just <laughs> Uh, list out my mistakes. I mean what What's more fun than telling everybody your mistakes, right? So Mistake number one Really was creating a nutrient Nutrient imbalance from the beginning of the of this uh, reef tank um, Really what I'm talking about is I had very little nitrates really undetectable and I had considerable phosphates and that kind of plagued me for the first, I would say, close to a year of the reef tank. Um, doing everything I could to, to knock down um, phosphates. And of course, a lot of that also drove down nitrates, probably more so. So that really didn't help with that nutrient balance. So anyway, back to my phosphate problem. So, you know, I tried, threw everything at it. And finally, about a year into the reef tank, uh, I solved my phosphate problems and I drove that sucker down to zero. Um, thought that I'd won, but really what I ended up uh, doing was allowing the dinos to flourish in my tank. Um, that leads to mistake number two, and that's really not recognizing dinos early enough and had no idea that all this brown what I thought was algae all over the rocks and on the sand bed was actually dinos. And at this point, it really didn't affect too many of the corals. Um, I did have some coral loss, but I thought that was due to my high phosphates, but it could have been dinos. Fast forward a few months later, uh, I made mistake number three, which was thinking it was algae, I needed to replenish my cleanup crew. So I bought a bunch of snails, some uh, hermit crabs, and um, did not realize it was dinos and the dinos would kill pretty much all the snails eventually. Yeah, and that really just fed the, the dinos, I think. Um, you know, all that detritus that was created due to the dying snails. I think, not 100% sure, but I think contributed to, or just fed the the dinos in the tank. So then finally I realized after doing some research that I actually had dinos, which leads me to mistake number four, which was not IDing the dinos or the type of dinos really early enough. And couple of mistake number four with mistake number five, which was not doing enough research prior to trying something out. So I'd read on Reef builders.com that they had tried out raising the temperature um, of the reef tank fairly quickly and just a bit higher than the higher limit of where we would normally keep our reef tanks um, and they found that that killed off dinos so I thought what's the harm let's try it so I raised my t tank temperature which is normally around 78 79 up to 83 and at first I thought this helped because it kind of changed a little bit uh, the coloration kind of looked a little bit differently and also with the higher temperature it seemed like my corals were actually growing faster so my Montes were really um, starting to take off in growth which I thought was awesome so I did this for a couple of weeks but then I noticed that the uh, dinos were only growing faster actually. So I think this type of dino was actually would bloom um, at elevated temperatures. You know, really trying out a fix, which I thought wouldn't harm anything, 
really ended up cost, causing more problems. So then the, the sort of bloom led to the dinos starting to cover up some of the corals. So um, I started to, you know, I tried siphoning it. It didn't really work very well. So then I started to use a turkey baster and started to, uh, to blow them off. And I think which only spread them all over the tank. And that's really when they started to grow over the corals and uh, start to suffocate pretty much all the corals, which led to killing off um, kind of the remaining Montes and the remaining um, Euphelia that I had. So really it wasn't, you know, one mistake. It was just kind of one mistake after the other. I think at, at some point if I had made kind of the right decision and killed off the dinos or dealt with the dinos early enough, um, I could have probably gotten through this as, as I think many reefers do, getting through a dino outbreak without much uh, coral loss. You know, it's as painful as it is to share um, all these mistakes, you know, I want um, you guys out there to learn from it, you know, especially new reefers, kind of like myself, getting back into the hobby. And also those of you thinking of starting a new tank, just something to think about, um, just to avoid this problem, because I do see a lot of posts out there um, on the internet, you know, YouTube uh, forums about just all the problems uh, all the reefers nowadays are running into um, with dinoflagellates. So really the first step that I took in this battle was to raise my phosphates and nitrates. Really mainly nitrates because it had been so low for so long. And it took a while and it took quite a bit of adding potassium nitrate uh, into the tank, you know, dosing it significantly for a couple of weeks before I started to detect uh, nitrates. Then I started to also add some biodiversity, meaning additional bacteria to, into the tank. Actually, one thing I failed to mention, which is very important, which I think may be the biggest reason I ended up with this dino problem, and that was when I had a bubble algae problem. So it started to take over the tank and I decided to use Brightwell's razor to get rid of them. And by the way, very effective. Um, so, you know, I followed the directions and uh, really took care of the bubble algae problem. I mean, within a couple weeks, um, I, they were all gone. Um, I think one problem I had was I couldn't really get them out of the tank effectively. Um, so that might have caused an issue or I killed off the algae, you know, the algae that was kind of keeping the dinos at bay or the bacteria that was keeping the dinos at bay. I'm not sure, but I think um, that was one big reason why, why the dinos really started to take off. So I would say, you know, this product is very effective, definitely does what it's advertised to do, um, but just be aware uh, depending on kind of the state of your tank, you may be leaving yourself vulnerable to dinos with, with the use of that product. So anyway, those are really all my my mistakes. I'm sure there are, there are more that I'm I'm not even aware of, mistakes that I made, um, but those are kind of the big one. Um, I think that the last one maybe I think the bigger reason I don't know I wouldn't really call it a mistake, but definitely a big reason. I think that to me that the dinos really took a foothold in the tank. So after a while, I did notice that the dinos were starting to sort of stay in check, but really not going away, um, at least fast enough for me. So I decided to take out all the sand and do a water change and rinse off all the rocks um, because there's just there was just a lot of detritus in the crevices of the in the of the rocks and also. Um, in the sand. So decided to do all that. And I think that really helped uh, kind of kill off most of the the dinos. I also kind of flipped some of the rocks so that for the rocks that were coated on the top side with dinos, they were all kind of on the bottom so they didn't see any sand. So they're still in there. I mean, not see any light. Um, they're still in there, but, um, but at least they weren't getting 
the light that they needed to grow. So then I ran into this live stream that Reef Dudes did with um, Cruz from Elegant Corals, uh, which, you know, they went through um, Cruz's kind of recipe for dealing with dinos. So I kind of followed that with just the exception of using hydrogen peroxide you know um, continue to dose the live bacteria added air stones to um, add some oxygen into the tank as well as continue to maintain kind of a, a high enough level of nitrates and going through that for about a week or two really pretty much took care of all the dinos and hopefully you're out of the woods um, i'll keep you guys Posted. So what did I learn from this experience? Uh, number one, keep nitrates and phosphates above zero. Uh, number two, biodiversity is very important in the reef tank. Uh, number three, do your research as much as possible. And if you do run into dinos, make sure to identify it. So I, uh, one thing I didn't mention is I actually bought um, a $15 microscope from uh, Amazon and that helped me identify that my, the type of dinos that I had. So that's very important because it really helps you deal with um, the dinos the proper way. So where do we go from here? I'm gonna keep a close eye on the dinos, uh, continue to dose bacteria to try to keep the biodiversity going and really start to rebuild this tank. And really hope you guys follow me um, on this journey to rebuilding this tank. I'm sure there'll be more problems to deal with um, and hopefully, you know, we can tackle them together. So thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Catch you next time. Oh, until next time, stay salty. Wait a second. Did I leave the skimmer off?